Before we actually go into the next section of study, I thought I'd do a separate lecture on the graphs of secant, cosecant, tangent, and cosecant. We've already talked about the graph of sine. So the graph of sine looks like this. It fluctuates between 1 and negative 1. Its period is 2 pi, so it starts at 0. It ends at 0. In the middle, it hits the x-axis again, so that at 1 pi it hits. At pi over 2, it hits its maximum of 1. And at 3 pi over 2, it hits its minimum of negative 1. So this is what one period of the sine graph looks like. I'm going to extend this over to the other side of the graph. If one period is 1 pi, then it's going to go to negative 2 pi on the other side. Sine hits the x-axis at every 1 pi, whether it's positive or negative. It's just if I go the other direction, at negative pi over 2, it's going to hit its minimum of negative 1. And at negative 3 pi over 2, it's going to hit its maximum of 1 because you kind of have to follow the pattern of the curve. Well, remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I want you to think about this, like this ordered pair here, which is at 2 pi comma 0. If I want to find the point that lies on the cosecant, I'm going to take the reciprocal of the output. Well, the output is 0. If you plug 2 pi in for sine, the sine of 2 pi is 0. Well, what's the reciprocal of 0? Well, the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. That means that on the cosecant graph, there's going to be an asymptote here. It happens again at 1 pi, because at 1 pi, the sine of 1 pi is 0, and the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. It happens again here at the y-axis, or at x equals 0. It happens again at x equals negative pi, and it happens again at x equals negative 2 pi. So on the sine graph, wherever the graph hits the x-axis, on the cosecant graph, the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Now we're going to look at it this way. Another way to look at the fact that this is a reciprocal is that if you look at this little portion of the graph here, it looks like a little parabola. Well, the reciprocal is basically going to take that graph and it's going to flip it over. See this little portion here? The reciprocal of that portion is going to look like this. See this portion here? The reciprocal is going to look like this. So it looks like a bunch of little parabolas. So the cosecant graph, in essence, is going to look like this. The reason I left the sine graph in there was so that you could see why it's a reciprocal, and you could visually see what a reciprocal does. Now let's talk about the cosecant graph for a minute. The period of cosecant is the same as the period of sine. It's going to be 2 pi, because every 2 pi it will repeat its pattern of either opening up or opening down. The other thing is that at every pi is going to be an asymptote. I want you to notice that the minimums of, or the values of 1, are going to occur at pi over 2, and then 2 pi after that, and then 2 pi after that in either direction. And the cosecant of negative 1 is going to occur at 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi after that, and 2 pi after that in both directions. The cosecant graph, unlike the sine graph, does not have amplitude. Amplitude means that there is a highest or lowest point on the graph. The cosecant graph doesn't have a highest or lowest point 
it goes up and down forever. Now, it doesn't mean there can't be a number being multiplied in front of cosecant, and that just means it's going to stretch or shrink it, like it does any other function. Now let's talk about the cosine of x. The cosine of x, which also had a period of 2 pi, started and stopped its period at the maximum. Halfway in the middle it hit its minimum, so that was at 1 pi. And at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is when it hit the x-axis. So this is what one period of the cosine curve looks like. Well, I'm going to expand that out here in the negative direction. So since the period is still 2 pi, it's going to start and stop at its maximum. At negative 1 pi, it'll be at its minimum. And at negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2, it'll hit the x-axis. So what is the graph of its reciprocal going to look like? Well, the reciprocal of cosecant is, or cosine, sorry, is secant. And like I said with the sine graph, anywhere this graph hits 0 or the x-axis, the reciprocal of that is going to be an asymptote. So there's an asymptote here, and here, and here, and here. So we're going to look at the little parabola shapes in between the asymptotes. To find the graph of secant, you're just going to do the reciprocal, or flip the graph over. Just flip the graph over. Flip the graph over. Flip the graph over. And that's what it's going to look like. Its period is also 2 pi in length. Its asymptotes are at every pi over 2. It also does not have amplitude because the graph actually goes up and down forever. To look at the tangent graph, we're actually going to put in some values of x to find out what the tangent is and do some graphing. So if you're going to do this on your calculator, just a reminder to be in radian mode. Let's start at 0 because that's easy. The tangent of 0 is just 0. If I go off to the right, the next tick mark that I've labeled is actually pi over 4, because that's halfway between 0 and pi over 2. Well, what's the tangent of pi over 4? It's 1. How about pi over 2? What's the tangent of pi over 2? The calculator gives me an error message. Guess what that means? It means there's an asymptote here. Okay, so the next one is going to be 3 pi over 4. So the tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. The tangent of 1 pi is 0. The tangent of 5 pi over 4 is 1. And the tangent of 3 pi over 2 is error message. Well, that means the graph must look something like this. If you go in the other direction, in the negative direction, you're going to find out that the tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1, and the tangent of negative pi over 2 is error message. So this is what you're going to see. If you follow the pattern, then the next asymptote must be here. In the middle, it must hit 0. To the left of 0, it must hit negative 1, and to the right, it must hit positive 1, and the graph must look something like this. The tangent graph is different in that its period is only 1 pi in length instead of 2. It hits its asymptotes at every pi over 2. I want you to notice that the graph goes up from left to right. Let's extend this graph now to the cotangent graph. 
Now, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So, cotangent's asymptotes are going to occur at the locations where this tangent graph hits the x-axis. So let's look at where it hits the x-axis. It hits the x-axis at negative pi, 0, pi. It must hit again at 2 pi, negative 2 pi. So now I know I can start this graph off. Let's call it 2 pi, negative 2 pi. So that's negative pi. And that's I know I can start this graph off by putting my asymptotes here. How do I know I can put my asymptotes for the cotangent graph here? Because I just said a moment ago, the tangent graph touches the x-axis at every pi. That means for the cotangent graph, those must be asymptotes. Now let's go back over here for a moment. Let's look at these other two points that are on the opposite sides of the x-intercepts. So let's come over here. This is at negative 1. Well, what's the reciprocal of negative 1? It's negative 1. This is an output of positive 1. What's the reciprocal of positive 1? Well, it's positive 1. So now let's come back over here. Where is it going to hit the x-axis? Well, anywhere that there was an asymptote in this graph at all the pi's over 2, it's going to hit the x-axis here, so at negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, at 1 pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2. It's going to be on these other sides where we're going to hit 1 and negative 1, so let's come back over here. This point here is three, negative 3 pi over 4. So at negative 3 pi over 4 on this graph, it's going to be at 1. Let's come, oops, wrong direction. Let's come back over here for a moment. This is at 5 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4 on this graph, it's going to be at negative 1. Oops, I put that there. Oh, no, I'm doing fine. Let's see, 5 pi over 4 is going to be right here, so it's going to be at negative 1. Let's come back over here for a moment. At negative pi over 4, it's at negative 1. Well, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So over here, at pi, negative pi over 4, it's going to be at negative 1. Oh, look at what happened to the graph. It looks like it literally took that graph and flipped it over, didn't it? So the graphs of the t cotangent must look like this. Instead of going up from left to right, they're going down from left to right. And the asymptotes are in a little bit different place. The asymptotes here were at the pi's. Or sorry, the pi's over 2. The asymptotes here are at the pi's. Reciprocal also means to flip that graph. And look what we did. We flipped the graph. Its period is also 1 pi. So just a reminder about the period. Sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant all have a period of 2 pi. Only tangent and cotangent had a period of 1 pi instead. Secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent all had asymptotes. They're discontinuous functions. As opposed to sine and cosine, which are continuous functions. Remember, those are ones that you can keep graphing it and put your pencil on the curve and follow the curve forever and never pick it up. For cosecant, secant, tangent, and cotangent, in order to follow the curve of the graph, you literally have to pick your pencil up, move it to the other side of the asymptote, and then follow some more. So they're discontinuous. And those are the graphs 
of secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent.